This is the Energy Makers Show, featuring the innovators, financers, and policymakers focused on the global energy demand. Brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. And here's your host, Paul Dickerson. Hi, I'm Paul Dickerson, and welcome to another episode of the Energy Makers Show. First up today from Rice University, it's 10th annual Clean Tech and Energy Venture Forum. We meet with Tabrez Ibrahim of Numat Technologies. This company focused on gas storage and separation technologies. Next up, we check in with Robin Kanok, who interviews Micah Odom with the Environmental Defense Fund. All that right after this. Where will the energy come from to move us forward? From natural sources in abundant supply, or perhaps a man-made source? At NRG, we believe innovation will solve our energy needs. That's why NRG is moving away from fossil fuels towards wind, solar, and other sustainable technologies to power the smart grid, the electric car, and our clean energy future. We're using all of our energy to develop more of it. This is the Energy Maker Show, brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. And now, back to the Energy Maker Show with your host, Paul Dickerson. Welcome back to the Energy Maker Show. Our guest now, Tabrez Ibrahim, co-founder of Numat Technologies. Tab, great to have you on the program. Thanks for having us. So yeah. tell us about Numat. So Numat's a clean tech university spin out out of Northwestern University, nice. and we're targeting gas storage and separations application. Well, t tell us about some of the technology. So we're developing uh, nanomaterials, a new class of them, and we have two key technologies. Um, one is a rapid computational tool, and another is a process, a supercritical activation process. Break those down for me, plain, plain yeah. English. So they're, they're complicated, but the way to think about it is that software basically helps identify the right materials quickly and optimally. And then the other thing takes out the liquid from the pores of the material. And with the goal being? We're hoping to make uh, nanomaterials, MOFs, quicker, cheaper, and then better performing than what's out there. And what is out there? There's only one company right now in the world, BASF. It's the world's largest chemical company that makes MOFs, but they're not able to activate the MOFs, and it takes them a long time to identify MOFs, and they haven't done the right uh, types of chemistries yet. Dig in a little bit on the MOFs. Okay. Yeah, so MOFs are basically porous uh, materials, and they have very high surface area. And what's neat about them is we can tailor design the pores of the MOFs so that they can be specific to a target application. That's something BASF can't do right now. And uh, that's very exciting, and this is a new disruptive technology, and we're targeting a lot of big, large growing markets. There's potentially multiple markets. One of them is natural gas vehicle fuel tanks. So with our MOFs in these tanks, you don't need to pressurize the tanks as much. Hmm. All right, so let's say I've got a natural gas vehicle. What, what does that mean to me? So with the MOFs in the tanks of natural gas vehicles, you don't have to pressurize the tanks as much. So they'll be safer, uh, also cheaper, go with a longer driving range, and you can use cheaper materials for the uh, tanks. We're also targeting gas storage of uh, hazardous gases in cylinders. And that these are gases that are toxic that come from the semiconductor industry. Additionally, um, gas masks for military applications, uh, oxygen storage for space flight, and uh, separations. All right, well, let, let's pick the gas mast. Uh, dig in and tell me how your technology is beneficial. What's unique about MOFs is you can selectively capture nerve agents, and that's something other gas masks can't do as well. And so that's a, that's a shorter market. We think we can get quicker revenue for that. Well, and certainly something that, that our government and the military and others may have some interest in. I hear maybe some congratulations on ARPA-E? Yeah, we're really thrilled about that. So for the for the gas mess, there's some, a lot of DOD funding out right now, and we, we will try to look into that a little bit more. For ARPA-E, we got funding for uh, natural gas vehicles for that. And this is really exciting because we have a, a consortium of other partners combined with us, and NUMAT's gonna be the designer of the uh, computational tool and the design of the material to advance that along with Northwestern uh, Gas Technology Institute and some others. And we're really excited to get this, and it's starting right now. Well, and it's a big deal because for those of our viewers that don't know, ARPA-E is what? Uh, Department of Energy yep. focused? Where? Yeah, so ARPA-E is basically the DARPA of energy and they've funded disruptive uh, breakthrough technologies uh, before and they continue to do that. And for, to give uh, your, here an example, uh, DARPA had funded the internet. That's where the internet came out of. And we see 
uh, energy disruptive technologies like ours uh, coming out of RBE funding. So this is really great to be recognized by the DOE and a lot of early stage VCs look at RBE funded companies and we're certainly excited about that. We're rounding out 2012. What, what does 2013 look like for you? So with 2012 finishing up, we're going to start in 2013 with some partnerships and looking to do computational design and materials synthesis for some of our partners that uh, we're starting to engage in, in doing non-recurring engineering projects and joint development agreements. So we're already getting material specifications from a lot of uh, major companies, and we hope to accelerate that in 2013. Tab, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you very much. And that wraps our discussion with Tabriz Ibrahim. We'll be back with more right after this. Energy Maker Show, brought to you by NRG, moving clean energy forward. And now, back to the Energy Maker Show. Hi, I'm Robin Kanok. Welcome back to the Energy Maker Show. Today, I'm with Micah Odom of the Environmental Defense Fund, where she is the Energy Media Director. Hi, Welcome, Robin. Micah. It's great to see you and great to be here. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. So tell us about the Environmental Defense Fund, Micah. Great, so the Environmental Defense Fund is an environmental organization that seeks to solve some of the world's most pressing environmental issues with market-based solutions. They bring together economics, law, science um, to really tackle those large issues. So you're not the typical enviro group that not. a lot of our viewers might think of. That is right, that is right. We're very market-based, um, bottom line driven. Fantastic. Now, tell us about this energy innovation series. I think that's an example of how you are market driven. Um, what its purpose is, some of the guests that you've had on, maybe some of the highlights. Yes, so the Energy Innovation Series was created to highlight some of the success stories within the clean energy sphere. And we have highlighted and will continue to highlight um, 20 innovations this year, whether they be business models or technologies that have the potential to really move the needle and revolutionize the energy um, industry. So we are on our 10th innovation right now. We've highlighted some really exciting innovators, um, Pecan Street based here in Austin being one of them as their consortium. We've also highlighted Nest Labs, um, new learning thermostat, uh, which is something that allows you to really interact with energy and the way that energy is produced and used in a new way. Um, we've highlighted Tendril's Tendril Connect, which is a really exciting mm -hmm cloud platform for all the data that's out there um, on energy usage and allows you to make sense of that and, and in turn, you know, monitor your usage, hopefully lessen your usage mm -hmm. and save some money on your electric bills. Mm -hmm. And how about Extreme Power? I think they were one of the first companies you highlighted. They were. Extreme Power was our first innovation right out the gate and it's a grid reliability and energy storage firm and we're also highlighting one of their employees in an upcoming video that we're doing that actually makes the business case for clean energy. Uh, they've gone from something around 30 employees to around 100 and um, moving forward. Mm -hmm. So very exciting. Fantastic. Also recipients of the Texas Emerging Technology Fund. Exactly. So exactly. We're, so we're very excited to get some of those we're Texas hoping they companies do well. in. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, let's switch gears here a little bit. Let's talk about natural gas. Okay. Kind of a controversial topic out in the, in the energy market space. Um, but uh, what is EDF's position on natural gas? EDF's position is that our core concerns at EDF are protecting public health and the environment. We do believe that natural gas, if distributed and extracted properly, um, which means getting the rules right with regards to chemical disclosure, um, wastewater disposal, the well integrity mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. casing and the cement mm -hmm. jobs, very important um, with regards to the drilling process, mm -hmm. um, as well as the community and land impacts 
And then very importantly, the, the climate and the air impacts from natural gas production. So if properly extracted and distributed, we do see natural gas as a win-win for the economy and the environment. Um, but that is a big if, and it, it entails getting the rules right at the state level. It also entails getting the methane leakage rate down. Mm -hmm. um, natural gas can be cleaner than coal and oil if we get the methane leakage rates down. So EDF is working diligently on um, a study to quantify those method, methane leakage rates and then lessen them to the point that natural gas really is a win-win. So I saw a report this week, um, I think it was a national report, that stated that the, the emissions in the United States are at a 20-year low right now. Do you attribute some of that to the natural gas, you know, switching from coal to natural gas? Absolutely, we do, and that's very, very exciting. And as we say, you know, we're moving forward cautiously. I think EDF is one of the um, only very large environmental organizations that aren't calling for an all-out ban on right. natural gas. It is happening. There are hundreds and thousands of wells out there right now. So we need to make sure that something that is growing in importance um, really is Absolutely. extracted properly and safely. Because there's we economic can do that, opportunity. And we can reap all of the benefits. Energy independence. Absolutely. That's correct. The other thing that I really want to talk about is a cool project that you're mm -hmm. working on. I think it's very different than most organizations, and it's on bill repayment. Yes. And that's actually using private capital, such as investors or banks, money to finance energy efficiency and renewable projects. That's exactly what it is. And we um, are working with the California Public Utility Commission right now to write the rules um, to make sure that we get it correct out there and then spread what's being done in California throughout the United States. Um, our own state right here in Texas is interested in hearing more about OBR. And what it is, is it's, like you said, you know, private capital financing energy efficiency and renewable projects on residential and commercial properties. Mm -hmm. And then that project is paid back on the ratepayers utility bill. And um, so it's, it's really bringing the capital from the investors, you know, to the projects and the utility acts as a facilitator there. So it's um, not using ratepayer or taxpayer dollars. That's it's correct. using private capital. Private capital. So it's exactly what we do at EDF. Our motto is finding the ways that work. Mm -hmm. And that Once is again, a market great driven. market driven based solution to, you know, getting those projects up and started. We have energy efficiency as a low hanging fruit. It's what we can do right now mm -hmm. um, in the clean energy sphere and it's available. So why not take advantage of it? Thank you, Micah. We appreciate you coming in today. Thank you, Robin. And that wraps up this episode of the Energy Makers Show, heard on the radio and seen on theenergymakers.com.